Three tomatoes are walking down the street. Papa tomato, mama tomato, and baby tomato. Playing catch up presents. Starring Lindsay Inkle and Jamie Nelson. So this is playing catch up, is it? I prefer something with a little more kick. Everybody's favorite condiment themed entertainment podcast. Put some hot sauce on my burrito, baby. Ha <laughs> ha sauce. Nobody. I mean, nobody puts ketchup on a hot dog. This is Hot Sauce on PlainKetchupPodcast.com, and I'm Jamie Nelson. With me, my co-host, Lindsay Hinkle. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, Jamie. Who do you think is the funniest person uh, on the planet, living or dead? I like Tina Fey. Um, But I'd have to say that the funniest person on the planet, living or dead, is... My sister. Really? Yes. Because she's just so angry all the time. <laughs> you do, so you don't mean funny haha, you mean funny point and laugh. I don't think it's that she's angry angry. I think it's just that she's kind of deadpan and sarcastic about everything. Mm. She's basically Daria. Well, no, she's going as Jane for Halloween. But I, And I looked at her and I was like, but you're Daria. <laughs> she works retail. Which was funny in and of itself because she doesn't really care for people sometimes. And someone came in and they said to her, why do you look so angry all the time? And she looks at him and goes, I'm not angry, I'm German. (laughs) How about you? Who's the funniest person? Actually, if we're on the sibling uh, topic, my brother's a lot funnier than I am. Jager is pretty funny. He's very quick. So my dad has this sort of like anal thing about like how the doily things on the armrests are and like if they fall off or if they crooked, he freaks out. So like my brother and I really, really hate doilies for that reason. (laughs) And uh, my brother and I were (laughs) joking around and I said, if a doily falls in the woods and no one's around, does it make a sound? No, because doilies don't make sound. And Jagger said, because they're not important. (laughs) <laughs> nice <laughs> I mean as funny as our siblings are We have like a legit comedian In our waiting room right now Oh yeah who's there Rob O'Reilly We are talking this month about stand up comedy And who better to get in the Skype studio Than one thirtieth Of funnier dies 30 comedians Under 30 Rob O'Reilly Thank you for having I'm actually two thirtieths Two thirtieths Yeah um I can't think of a good joke. I, if I was fat, right, that I, I'd have a great joke to make there. But um, no, I'm I'm just one thirtieth. <laughs> I wanted to make a fraction joke, and then it went nowhere. How are you, Jamie? So good to hear from you. I'm good. Do you prefer to be called a comic or a comedian, or is there even a difference? I don't really care. I don't know. Some people are touchy about it. I uh, I guess to me the difference is comic implies specifically stand-up comic, which. Uh. I am, so I'm fine with that. But also, comedian means like just a general, like a comedic actor is a comedian. Like Will Ferrell is a comedian. You know what I mean? Ah. Uh. Uh, but I'm also that. Like I act in things, so I don't. I don't really mind being called either. Uh, are we coming up on ten years of you doing stand up? Yeah. No. It's um. You know what? I have it written down. One November. Oh, yeah. November ninth. Ah. Going to be. Well. A ten year. Happy happy anniversary in November. <laughs> so you are in LA now. Do you move directly from New York? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I moved from New York uh, about a year ago, July of 2010. 2010? Uh, I'm not going to say say that. 2010. Why the move? Do they just have more comedians who like to play basketball in California, or what? Uh, <laughs> they actually do. Oh yeah. Yeah, I play. I in uh, the leagues, the comedian leagues in both. In New York, there's just like a handful of guys that get together and they call it a league, you know, the ABA, Astoria Basketball Association. But in uh, in LA, there's actually like a whole legitimate league with like referees and everything. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's like a million comics that play basketball out here. It's really crazy. How does something like that start? I mean, I can't imagine like it's a bunch of guys shooting hoops in the park and then someone asks, so what do you do for a living? Oh, you too, huh? Well, no. I mean, you get to know com. It's not. It's the other way around. You get to know your friends, your comics, and you're like, "What are you into? Playing basketball? Let's play it together." And then people start. I uh, people started to play pickup games on Saturdays. It's a game that still goes. Uh, and then from there, they got so many people interested in basketball that uh, they just started up their own league. Wow. Like a legitimate league that plays Tuesday nights. Is it? Uh, 
is is it pretty good or is it more like the Harlem Globetrotters? Uh, well, first of all, the Harlem Globetrotters are really good. I, well, I think no, no, afraid... I know. I just mean, is it comical? Oh yeah. Well, you know, honestly, when I first went to a game, I was like, oh, like I'll be one of the the better people. Like I just assumed that you know, as comedians, they're not very good at basketball. I feel like comics are usually kind of uncoordinated and stuff, but. I was shocked at how, like, everyone out here is really good. I'm actually one of the worst people. Like, people are great at basketball here. It's really weird. I think it's just kind of like, you know, the thing is, in L.A., people generally, like, take care of their bodies more and stuff and and exercise and eat healthier. And in New York, all the comics are, like, you know, out at clubs smoking cigarettes and drinking every night. It's kind of a different, like, here, you know, you can't drink as much because you got to drive home kind of a different uh, lifestyle yeah the only thing is uh in new york it's just like if you drink too much so you, so what you end up in the in the far rock away on the end of the a train or something and you're like whoops i'll turn around and go back i've been there what's the worst thing that's happened on stage any bad heckling experiences well i, have a, I actually have a video on youtube it's called comedian answers hecklers phone call or something like that and it's uh um, I was on stage and uh, this guy was literally answering his phone like in the front row. Uh, this is like a while ago, this video actually. But uh, like I, I like took his phone and I like started talking to the person on the other end and I told them that, you know, the guy was being an asshole and stuff. I don't know. It, it was funny and uh, everyone seems to enjoy the video a lot. But um, people very rarely heckle me. I, I don't really know why that is. I would think... Part of it is that anytime anyone started to heckle me, I'm like pretty good at <laughs> shitting on them. <laughs> well, I had a show the other night. This is kind of a weird story. I, I had a show and this guy uh, followed me out to my car and he was like, hey. And I was like, yeah. And uh, he's like, you were really funny. Like, where can I see you? <laughs> and I don't know. It was like the, weird, the way it was all, I really was scared. Like, he like followed me to my car and in a very aggressive way. It was like, hey. And I was like, I turned around like scared. Uh, he's like the most aggressive fan I've ever, I don't know, it's really weird. I thought that, uh, I thought it was like he was going to be mad at me for something. Uh, and then he was like a fan. It was just a very bizarre scenario. It'd be like if you were like walking to your car late at night and somebody was like, hey, you're beautiful. Can I get your number? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, as long as he doesn't like kidnap you and make you do jokes for his kids or something. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to tie me to a bed and make me write jokes. Exactly. Probably the biggest reason that I don't consider doing stand-up is like that ad-lib crowd work type stuff. Do you do a lot of crowd work or do you pretty much script your set? I don't do a lot of crowd work. Whenever I do crowd work, it gets a big laugh and I probably should do more, but I just don't enjoy it. The thing for me, like the whole reason I ever get up for me is to develop new material it's like to try out the new jokes i'm working on Mm. although it works for that show it doesn't i don't leave feeling productive because like even if i kill with crowd work i'm like okay well that worked for that show but it's not like i'm gonna like hold on to that because there's nothing worse than guys who to me than guys who like like (laughs) have written crowd work? I mean, there is such a thing. I mean, oh, look for someone with a pointy hat. <laughs> right, exactly. And then they have their line for a guy with a pointy hat. I don't know. I think that's really lame. So, I mean, I don't feel productive when I've come up with crowd work, right? You know what I mean? Like, so I want to I want to get to the... My whole point is I want to get to the jokes that I've written. And when people interrupt me, the only time I really do crowd work, honestly, is if something interrupts me and, and it annoys me more than anything. So I have to deal with it. And I deal with it in funny ways, but... Um, uh, and it's something that I didn't, I mean, when I first started, I kind of, I mean, I was horrible at it. I, I had no idea whenever something would happen that did, required crowd work, I would generally just ignore it, which is the worst thing you can do as a comic. Like if something happens, you need to address it, you know? And then, uh, I would, if I tried to do crowd work, it was usually really horrible and it just, it just took It took moving to New York and doing lots of shows where people are rowdy and say stupid things to get good at crowd work. I mean, before I moved to New York and started New York and started New York to shows for drunkards at, you know, midnight and stuff, I I did not do crowd work. And and I feel like now that I've developed the ability to to do it, now I don't really, now I'm like, okay, you know, I I know I can do it. It's in my back pocket, but I I really don't enjoy it. And I don't, I don't. I don't want to have to do it. I want people to just listen to what I've prepared for them. You know? Yeah. I've heard that comedians um, 
sort of have to be the anti-celebrity because they have to be relatable, otherwise they're not funny, unlike, uh, you know, rock stars or actors, which can sort of be more untouchable and godlike. Do you, have you found that there's like a lot of fakeness or that uh, there's more of a down-to-earth thing because of the relatableness that comedians need to have? I don't think comedians are fake at all. I think they're the opposite. I think, to me, I think when I think of fakeness, I think of someone uh, concealing, you know, the truth of, about what they are. And I think comedians, uh, at least the funny ones, they they have to do the op- I mean, when you're a comedian, you basically have to delve into the very embarrassing things you don't want to talk about. And the funniest comics are comics that are really honest. You know, they like talk about things that they are feel uncomfortable talking about that, you know, they, like Louis C.K. is probably my favorite right now, and he's just so honest on stage. And I, I strive for that. I strive to be just completely honest on stage, and just in in life in general. I mean, I'm just I'm I'm honest to a fault. Like girlfriends, I date. <laughs> oh no! Frustrated at how honest I am. Uh, was it like your ears are too big or something? <laughs> Yeah, like I'll be like, you know, you look really ugly today. No, I don't do that. <laughs> like I'll tell them about an ex girlfriend or something, and that'll bother them. You know, that happens. A lot. Like I'm just, I'm just really like, there's no filter. Like I don't think, oh well, you know, my current girlfriend might be upset about me talking about a last girlfriend, but uh, I just don't. I just, I just say whatever, and I, I try not to worry about how people are gonna take it. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, I get along best with people who aren't sensitive. Mm-hmm. You know, people who are sensitive are the opposite of, you know, who should date a comic. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. You did 100 colleges last year, is that right? Or over 100 colleges? Yeah, it wasn't last, it wasn't this last year that's ending, that just ended. It was the year before that. Okay. Uh, I believe that you were at Wisconsin Lacrosse University. Do you remember that show at all? Yeah, you know, actually something kind of funny happened at that show. Uh, <laughs> I I never made a bit out of it. I probably should have. Um, this there was a there was this point where I made a joke about Asian people, and this Asian girl got offended. And then uh, I mean the show went well overall, but I think I kind of offended. I don't know. I couldn't tell, but it seemed like she wasn't laughing. And then after the show, I went up to her um, when I, we were leaving, and I was like, "Hey, like I hope that joke like didn't offend you." And she's like, "She's like, what are you talking about?" I'm like, "You know, like the joke I did." And she's like. She's like, what comedy show? And uh, I realized that I actually was talking to a completely <laughs> different. <laughs> I think the joke was literally about how Asian people look the same, and <laughs> unironically, like I I apologized to the wrong person. Oh, it's like a Twilight Zone episode where you think you're off stage, but wait, you're you're still there. <laughs> What's next for you? Well, um, um, I'm doing a couple NACAs this semester, so I guess I'll be touring colleges again. Look look out for me if you're in mid-America or the South. I think mid-America is like Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, uh, probably Western Pennsylvania. Like the Midwestern NACA. Yeah, it's really like where I'm from, basically, Ohio, Kentucky. Uh, and then... Um, I'm writing a screenplay, so yeah. so like in three years, look out for a movie called The Breakup Test um, by Rob Moran. And who is going to be in this movie? Uh, if you had your if you had your say, well, me, I'd be one of the people in it. And then uh, I don't know. I've I mean, I've I've dreamt of getting certain people in it for. I've been thinking of this movie for a while, and I I think a lot of the people that. I was like, oh, this person's like a real up and comer, and they'd be great. And like now, I'm well. The, I was right about them, and uh, now all the people that I had in mind are kind of probably too big to be in a movie that I'm going to produce. But, uh, but if I produced it, I mean, I might you know get a legitimate production company behind it, and then I can get whoever. But like my favorite people are like Nick Kroll, T.J. Miller. Kamel Nanjiani, Pete Holmes. You know, people like that. I'd like to be. It's like you know, it's a movie about people in their 20s. So I'd like to get the comics who I think are great that are in their 20s to be involved. Do you have any product to plug, any shows coming up? What's what's in the pipeline? Um, you know, just plug plug my website. It's uh, thecampuscomic.com. And uh, I have a new video up on Funny or Die. It's a Funny or Die exclusive called Last Pizza Commercial. You could watch that. And you, do you have a Facebook? Uh, you have a Twitter, right? Uh-huh, yeah, Rob O'Reilly. It's just everything's like 
Twitter.com slash Rob O'Reilly, Facebook.com slash Rob O'Reilly, R-O-B-O-R-E-I-L-L-Y. Well, thanks for joining me and uh, thanks for chatting with me. Yeah, no problem. Sounds good. Thanks cool. for having me. Thanks so much. Take care. This has been Hot Sauce, brought to you by PlainCatchupPodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and comment on iTunes. Check back every Monday for a new celebrity guest interview. You may also want to check out our hilarious Wednesday videos on YouTube.com slash PlainCatchup. That's P-L-A-I-N-K-E-T-C-H-U-P. Sign up for our newsletter on PlainCatchupPodcast.com to be entered into our monthly drawings. We give away t-shirts, music, stickers, and more from our guests. Please like us on Facebook.com slash PlainCatchup and follow us on Twitter at PlainCatchup. Don't forget to support this project by buying plain ketchup swag at our Cafe Press store. Have a question? Email Jamie and Lindsay at gmail.com. That's J-A-I-M-E and L-I-N-D-S-E-Y at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay saucy.